Hey, hey, Facebook fam. Happy Friday. And uh, just to start the weekend off right, I uh, just got done with a fasted workout. And there's many uh, reasons why I do a fasted workout, first of all, but it upregulates something called your AMPK, which in turn is going to increase my fat burning, my fat oxidation. And if you're going to increase your fat burning, you're going to need more mitochondria. So it increases mitochondrial biogenesis. A lot of big terms this Friday, I know. And then with that, we're going to increase massive amounts of energy and be far more efficient at making more energy. So fasted workouts are awesome. And so it just gives me kind of a good way to start the weekend. And uh, so first thing I want to talk about is um, content is crucial. Content is absolutely critical when you're talking about, you know, my last video, for example. You know, my last video, <laughs> people uh, didn't quite understand it because they looked at the title and it created quite the stir. Now, <laughs> last video's title actually was the reason why I got so many negative comments, especially from those who didn't actually watch the video. And honestly, those who actually don't bother listening or watching the actual content isn't necessarily the people I'm targeting anyways, but you can't judge a book by its cover. So you've got to make sure you watch the video, understand the message, listen to the message, you know, before you make a comment. That way we can have a healthy, educated discussion on topics. <laughs> I had a, you know, I had a, I mean, a few of these, but I had one person just saying, you know, call me all these profanities on Facebook. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. And I go very nicely. One question. Did you watch the video? And she goes, no, because I disagree. <laughs> well, you never watched the video. So really try to watch the video. And then if you disagree with me, awesome. Let's have a discussion. But what I really care about is people misconstruing my message and thinking that I'm advocating a specific lifestyle when in fact I'm doing just the opposite. You know, um, you don't want to, uh, I really, that's not exactly what I wanted to do at all. And, um, consequences of being a sugar burner is really what my last video was all about because when someone is dependent on sugar as their primary energy source, they need multiple meals a day to have sustained energy. Glucose spikes, remember? Insulin gets released and glucose drops heavily, leaving them with an energy loss and leaving them with hunger cravings. You know, so I'm not an advocate of that, absolutely not. But for those that are dependent on glucose, they definitely do need to replenish their food all the time. But that is not a healthy lifestyle. Because being a sugar burner and being dependent on multiple meals a day for energy leads to drastic consequences. And those consequences are crazy. I mean, the inability to burn fat. Yeah, if you're dependent on sugar for fuel, you're gonna have an inability to burn fat. Even though most people have a huge supply of fat, they're not able to actually go down and burn the fat they have because they're only able to burn sugar because that's what you've trained your body to do for so long. Also too, being dependent on glucose, on sugar, leads to insulin resistance or a lack of insulin sensitivity. It leads to chronic inflammation. It leads to excessive free radical production, which further increases inflammation. It increases brain fog. It lowers the amount of growth hormone production. So there's so many different variables that sugar burning causes that cause you to downregulate your health and not achieve the level of optimal human performance that we all want and need. And if you just look at two of the negative consequences that being a sugar burner causes, insulin resistance and inflammation. Now, I have a question. What is two things in common with every single chronic disease out there? What are two things that every single chronic disease has in common? chronic inflammation and insulin resistance. So it only makes sense to choose a lifestyle intervention that aims to lower your risk of insulin resistance, 
that lowers your risk of chronic inflammation. It only makes sense. And when we're talking about that, when we're looking really deep into what we can do, we have to, if we don't want to deal with those consequences, if we want to get healthy and express optimum human performance, then we have to train our body to use the cleanest, best fuel possible to especially eliminate inflammation and insulin resistance. And ladies and gentlemen, that is fat. We got to be able to use fat for fuel, fat as our primary fuel. And the two best ways that I know of doing that are fasting. Fasting, I wrote the book on fasting, so absolutely, I'm a huge advocate of fasting. I do fasting nearly every single day in some way, shape, or form, and a ketogenic diet. Ketogenic diet and fasting are the two best ways to get into a state of fat burning, to get your body to start to transform its primary fuel from glucose to fat to get that metabolic flexibility again that is so important for optimal health. And so there's many ways to really start off a process of that. There's many ways to, um, if you will, start a fasting regimen, to start a ketogenic diet. And one thing you gotta do, first of all, is that there's not no, there's no right way. I mean, people say you gotta change the food you eat first. Some people say go right into fasting. You know, I'm more of a, uh, hardcore go all in personality. So I'm someone that can actually go all into just fasting. And that's kind of my personality, but someone who wants to do that without any uh, energy dips, there's other ways to do that. And such as first change your diet. So you're still giving your body a supply of food while your body's slowly changing its metabolic machinery, if you will. And so there's many different ways to do it. If you want to start off this weekend, you know, it might be tough because Easter's coming up and you know, Easter and a lot of, uh, holidays revolve around uh, eating and barbecuing, but um, start narrowing your eating window because the longer you go without eating, the more likely your glucose and your glycogen stores are going to get used up, which means your body's going to have to get fuel from something. So it's going to go after fat eventually. And so that's one of the easiest ways to do it is just start to narrow your eating window during the day. So instead of eating first thing when you wake up, all hours out of the day and then eating right before you go to bed, try delaying breakfast a little bit because remember breakfast is the meal that breaks the fast. The meal that breaks the fast never has to be first thing in the morning. You know, yes, you're fasting when you're sleeping, but you never have to actually do that. And so fasted, you know, so being fasted, doing all that, there's just so many different ways. I recommend just starting to narrow your eating window. It's a very easy strategy to get everything up. And so, um, happy Friday, everybody have a great week and have a great happy Easter. If you celebrate Easter, um, Dr. Michael Van is signing off and I will be back maybe this weekend, but for sure by Monday. And I just, uh, appreciate each and every one of you and, uh, Dr. Michael Van out.